In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the best new armored and bulletproof vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. So, so far, Rockstar have added three amazing options into the game. The Speedo, Mule, and Pounder Custom. Now, what's unique about all three of these vehicles is Rockstar specifically made them for business deliveries going out of the nightclub. And we're going to be talking about just how powerful these vehicles are when compared to other armored and bulletproof cars that we have in the game. So let's start with the Speedo first. The Speedo is unique because it actually comes free with the nightclub. It's one of the only vehicles you don't have to pay for in this update. Now, all three of these vehicles are stored on the first garage level of your nightclub, but even though the Speedo is free, it comes with $692,000 worth of upgrades. Uh, it's a four-seater, and with maximum armor, it explodes in two tank or flak shots and seven homing or RPG missiles during the sail missions only. That's the thing you need to know about these vehicles we're going to be talking about today. If you just take them out in free mode, they actually don't have the same armor capabilities that they do during the cell missions. During the cell missions, they are way more powerful than what they are in free mode. Another thing the Speedo Custom is immune to in sail missions is getting locked on. When you're doing a sail mission, an oppressor can't lock onto you, a deluxo can't lock onto you. That is incredibly awesome. It can also have a mounted MG, a remote 50 cal, or a remote minigun. It can also have proximity mines as well, but as you'll see throughout this video, I don't put proximity mines on once because I always honk the horn and I end up dropping one at my feet and blowing myself up. So I've never put those on in any of the weaponized vehicle options. Moving on to the Maibatsu Mule Custom, the Mule is $95,000 or with the trade price $72,000 and it has $897,000 worth of potential upgrades. Now the Mule is a four seater and it has the same armor capabilities as the Speedo. It, it will explode in two tank or flak shots and then seven homing or RPG missiles uh, in a cell mission only. Again, in free mode, it's gonna be very weak. One missile will destroy it, but we're gonna be talking about the cell missions here. Now it has the same lock on immunity that the Speedo has uh, during cell missions. It has a little bit more weaponry. It can have a mounted MG or mounted missiles, as well as a remote grenade launcher for the passengers. And it also has the proximity mines as well. And last but not least, we've got the MTL Pounder Custom, which starts at $320,000. Its trade price is $241,000, and it has $977,000 worth of upgrades. Now, this one is by far the most unique and I would say the best. So it is an eight seater, which means if you are selling with a motorcycle group, you can fit all eight of your group members in the same vehicle. With maximum armor, it takes two tank or flak shots to explode, which is the same as the other two. However, it can survive 12 homing missiles and 11 RPG missiles during a cell mission. This vehicle is by far going to protect you the most when it comes to surviving uh, you know, missiles and oncoming fire from enemies. 12 homing, 11 RPGs, that is insane. And when you add on top of that, that it still has lock on immunity, so homing missiles would have to hit you automatically, that is very impressive. Now its firepower is also the most impressive too. It can have a mounted MG, mounted missiles, or a remote missile battery that you the driver control. It has remote grenade launchers for the passengers and proximity mines. So now let's talk about the bulletproof resistance of these vehicles. So the windows for all three of these vehicles work the exact same way way. So just like the armor capabilities in free mode versus a cell mission, it's also a little bit different. So in free mode, it takes nine bullets to break the window with the 10th dealing damage to the person inside. However, during the sail mission, it takes 15 shots to break with the 16th hurting the person inside. So this vehicle truly is bulletproof to a degree. In free mode, you have nine shots where the vehicle will be bulletproof. And then in sail missions, you'll have 15 shots in which it will be bulletproof, where the 16 does damage. That's actually a lot. 15 rounds to connect cleanly on the window when you're moving, when you're not standing still. It's actually really tough for someone to get inside and do damage. 
So these are very bullet resistant vehicles in free mode, but even more so during the new cell missions. So since these are weaponized vehicles as well, let's talk about the weapons included on them too, starting with the mounted MGs. So you get two guns, their range is 1000 meters, and their fire rate is 310 RPM. It takes about nine shots to kill, which is about 1.7 seconds for one line of fire. And the Pounder Custom has the best one of these against other vehicles. So again, this just goes to prove that the Pounder Custom is again, probably the strongest option out of them all. Now talking about the mounted missiles, you've got two launchers with a range of 545 meters. There's no lock on. Now the fire rate is 30 missiles per minute, which is not bad. And the missile speed is 426 kilometers per hour. Now it's a relatively weak explosive and you're only limited to 30 missiles. However, during a cell mission, there is no limit. You can fire as many missiles as you want. In free mode though, you'll be limited to 30. What about the remote grenade launcher that the passengers control? It's one launcher with a fire rate of 32 RPM and a very strong explosive. If you're looking to blow things up, the remote grenade launcher is the way to go. What about the remote 50 cal? It's one gun, it has a range of 410 meters, a fire rate of 420 RPM, 50% damage to level 100 plus, two shots to kill, and can be done in point three seconds. So the 50 cal, very, very powerful against other players. So this is a really nice option right there. What about the remote minigun? So the big significant advantage over the remote 50 cal is the fire rate. You now have a fire rate of 1200 RPM. However, your damage is much less. It's gonna take 12 shots to kill, which is going to be around 0.6 seconds. However, the big difference here is it's much better than the remote 50 cal against vehicles. Because you have that fire rate, it's super easy to just pump a lot of shots into a vehicle and blow it up much quicker than the remote 50 cal, which is why I still think at the end of the day, it is the much better option. After that, we've got the remote missile battery, which unfortunately on the Pounder Custom can get this truck stuck under low bridges. So you do have to be careful about that. It has four launchers, no lock on, a range of 425 meters, four missiles with a four second cooldown, a missile speed of 630 kilometers per hour, and you have 30 missiles in free mode, whereas no limit during a cell mission. So that's very powerful, although again, you can get it stuck on bridges and whatnot. And last but not least, we've got the proximity mine. So the proximity mine is a strong explosive that is activated about 0.3 seconds from detection. So that's why I do not use them because I always honk my horn and it's obviously too late for me to get out of the way once I set them on the ground. Now again, some information on these vehicles since you will be likely using them in cell missions only. Uh, the Speedo is used between zero and 90 crates. The Mule is used between 90 and 180 and the Pounder is used between 180 and 360. So that amount right there will ultimately determine uh, what vehicle you use for the cell mission. You don't get to choose uh, when you're doing that. And of course, it really just does come down to personal preference at the end of the day. The Speedo is the quickest and the most maneuverable. The Pounder certainly has the most firepower. The Mule is sort of right in the middle. So you really just have to, you know, drive them around in free mode to sort of get a feel for what you like. And then that way, when you go about doing cell missions, you can choose to either do smaller amounts or one big bulk amount depending on which vehicle you like. Now, one more thing quickly before we end today's video, you probably noticed that you saw little wedges on the front of every single vehicle if you upgrade them to their maximum amount. And you might assume that it's like the Phantom Wedge or you know, it's like the Armored Boxville. It has the ability to push things out of the way. It's really not the case. The wedge is almost cosmetic to a degree. So do not expect to be able to ram other vehicles out of the way like you can with the uh, Phantom Wedge or even something like the Vigilante or the Insurgent that has a, a really high stopping power. These vehicles do not. Uh, in fact, doing that is just going to slow you down. And because of their nature, which all of them are trucks at the end of the day or vans, I should say, it's really hard to get that momentum going back up again. So don't rely on the wedges here. I really don't think they even help at all. And at the end of the day, they are just going to slow you down. And when you've got police and other people shooting at you, 
that is the last thing you want to have happen. But anyways, that's all the information I've got for you guys in this video today regarding the best new armored and bulletproof vehicles in Grand Theft Auto Online. Let me know in the comments down below which one of these is your favorite, the Speedo, Mule, or the Pounder Custom. I'd love to hear from you guys down there. Also, big thanks to a user on the Grand Theft Auto Online Reddit, Nitro Tom, for putting all this information together. I'll leave a link to his post in the description. It was incredibly useful, very detailed, um, and goes into really all the things you want to know. If you maybe missed something or forgot something, I'll leave a link to it in the description. But anyways, that's all I've got for you guys in this video today. If you did go on to enjoy this video, though, a like rating would, of course, be awesome. And also, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new or you like daily GTA 5 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.